Hello friends, here's another deep dive into one of the topics of CitizenCon 2021. This will be an update on what the Planet Tech team is doing to not only improve the areas and planets we'll be seeing in the future, but also bring us new tools that could allow us to also create something in-game. As before, this will be a faster pace than normal, so sit back and enjoy this condensed summary. And thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. And thanks to my newest Patreon member, Samuel Baez. I'd like to start this out by saying this will be a more technical discussion. If you're looking for more of the visual additions that have been made to the game, check out my previous videos on CitizenCon in the playlist linked down below. This talk is more focused on explaining new practices and technologies that will add some very much needed features to the game. While the technology has always been incredible and arguably industry leading, it has also been mostly static. With things like seasons, dynamic weather, functioning outposts and settlements, and realistic ecosystems not really being a focus. Today, you'll get to hear how progress on those features is going. First, we'll be talking about Gen 12, and how it will heavily increase the quality and performance of every planetary body in the game. Dynamic tessellation will allow for an increase in the triangle count on the fly while the game renders, increasing the quality of closer objects in-game. These new triangles help to create higher quality details in the surface terrain, and will replace the current per pixel rendering process, optimizing performance and improving surface visuals by tracing rays from the camera to the surface. Long distance planet visuals have also been improved specifically around terrain ocean intersections. Bodies of water have been mostly left alone despite being planned since Planet Tech was first introduced. But over time, the focus has been able to shift from some of the more important planetary features to this behemoth. Water features have been showing up quite a bit recently. New details around shorelines, improved water graphics, buoyancy, boat parameters, and now this. Starts to make you think the planned water-rich worlds may be more useful than you thought. The tessellation, long distance improvements, and water features were the primary improvements that have been brought on by Gen 12 for now. For the rest of the performance enhancements that Gen 12 and the Vulcan renderer will bring to the game, I would check the rest of my CitizenCon playlist for a better understanding of how Star Citizen will run with better performance in the future. Next, we'll talk about dynamic ecosystems and how they'll improve planetary terrain. There have been a few key developments in the ecosystem creation tool recently. The method of spawning objects such as rocks and trees on planets has changed. Objects now spawn outside of the terrain patches that are used to make the larger planetary surfaces. This allows for increased resolution in the terrain, better spread of assets, and better performance for the players as the objects load in differently. With this ability to now create different rock asset placements separate from the terrain patch, Maybe we'll see areas with much less rock cover, making for better driving surfaces on some of the moons. This also means we will soon be getting the ability to adjust the distance at which the objects render in order to better control performance for our own computers specifically. Reactive ecosystems are also in development, allowing for changes in planetary objects based on their surroundings. As an example, objects can maintain scaling biases for various factors like temperature. This could lead to flora that reacts to temperature, changing landscapes and hiding areas in specific seasons. A new system has been designed for animal and entity spawning as tokens. This will allow for better planetary preset planning, which essentially erases work for designers later. So as artists build planets, they can now drop a rock on any planet and have that rock conform to the biome, whether that be snow, desert, jungle, or water. This is yet another tool that fits important processes into systemic behaviors which will really help to populate planets with objects and animals quickly in the future. The team has also figured out how to make foliage visually reflect health level, as well as reflect the current season. While that does sound strange, these details will be important considering the new fire propagation effects that we'll be dealing with soon, as well as the proper orbit and rotation that we know will define seasons on each of the planets. We mentioned the coastline earlier, and how the visuals were improving there. 
Rivers are also going to be part of a new initiative to create a system that dynamically places unique biomes around natural areas in order to make sure they truly stand out considering their unorthodox details. Springs will naturally form rivers that will run down hills and realistically create lakes, which will spawn assets on the banks and wetlands to realistically reflect the surrounding. And just in case you're a stickler for detail, this goes all the way down to the rocks in the water having a glisten to them. Of course, CIG has built a tool specifically for river meshes to adjust fine details in the shape, color, flow, and other properties of the water. This could also be a hint at the lava tool, which is one of the next steps, and will come from this tool later next year. This would need to be joined by another key step, which is creating a full planetary water body creation system, like a height map editor but for the liquids on the planet. While the water we've seen in game in here at CitizenCon is not the best out there, it's not bad for a space sim, and it will continue to improve over time. Now let's talk about one of the bigger reveals of the entire event this year. Raster. But first, because I like to poke fun sometimes, let's go back to where this started. In 2017, CIG introduced the Pioneer Base Building Ship, a massive industrial platform that would swoop in and set down on that frontier planet and get to work building your space metropolis as you Elon Musk your way around the verse. Only the ship was clearly very, very far off, as was even the idea of player bases, and CIG further stoked the fires by selling land claims for real money. No matter what the intention was, this did not go over well. But anyways, fast forward, mm, slowly crawl forward almost four years, and here we are. The base building tool is seeing the public, and it's suddenly a bit closer than just a concept. But that's not all this is. Let me explain. In order to scale up for Star Citizen, CIG has dedicated a lot of time towards building tools that will help. The planet editor, height map editor, audio systems, and UI creator are all made in-house or heavily modified to make it easier to make what this game specifically needs. The base building tool, Raster, is no different, and is a systemic tool meant to control the dynamic creation and population of bases, settlements, and towns. The name comes from a combination of STAR, cause Star Citizen, and the acronym for real-time strategy game, which is RTS. I guess because there's an R in there somewhere. This is because the perspective takes that of an RTS game. This object container oriented system allows for locations to be placed or changed without needing the code that connects all the included missions, AI, and other objects that would normally be attached to their specific location. This basically means that the location is detached from everything that sits on it which could bring a big boost to production speed because there's much less that has to be reloaded every time a change is made. In the past, we've seen considerable increases in development for ships, planets, and UI additions when their respective tools were created. This change in combination with server meshing could lead to the same thing happening with these ground locations over the next two years. During the creation process of these locations, Raster uses what they call a connector system that dynamically generates and connects all modular pieces of outpost interiors and exteriors together and automatically edits the terrain around them to match. Believe it or not, up until this point, designers have actually had to place locations only where the terrain would agree with the building, which is why all the outposts in the Stanton system are simply built on stilts. Something like editing the terrain around a base may seem simple, but in the environment this game is being built in, simple things tend to cause problems. And this seems like a very good problem to have solved. With a tool like this built out, the addition of these outposts from a location perspective depends less on the capability and more on the specific art assets being built. This is great news as new star systems introduce architectural diversity. Hopefully this tool can be used for building systems on mountains or even caves as well someday. And finally, the big announcement which I totally already spoiled this tool is actually an early working model of what we will eventually be using to build our own bases in the game. 
I did not expect to hear that this feature was that far into development, but it's great to know. Player-owned bases will likely be a pivotal moment for this game, and should be interesting to watch unfold. And that's all that was shared in the Planet Tech update video at CitizenCon. Which is weird because there were many more planetary updates. If you haven't seen them, make sure to check out my Life in the Verse and Gameplay recap videos. You'll get a better idea of some of the planetary changes that are coming soon. I don't really agree with how they formatted this panel as much of the interesting content ended up in one of the earlier ones, but I see why they did it. Regardless, this was still an update worth getting. And if you like this coverage and want to support what I'm doing, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every dollar puts us one step towards renting our own place. So thank you for all the support. I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. And thanks to my top supporters, TK, Ken Garcia, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber7, El Gordo, Jarzy, Niku, Jin, Bilal Eliasem, and Brian Peterson.